In this video, we are going to be looking at profits maximization in a monopoly or monopolistic market, particularly when two commodities are produced. Now, we are looking at a situation whereby when a, a monopolist or monopolistic uh, is producing two different products, at what point will he make highest profit? That is, how many units of commodity X will he produce and then how many units of commodity Y will he produce to make her highest profit? Now, if you look at the question here, a monopoly sells two products, X and Y. Demand function is X the demand function for y is this then this is the combined combination so we are asked to find profit maximizing output of each product now to do this now the first thing we write is our, our, form, our, our profit function now our profit function here our profit function is going to be tr tr uh, minus tc tr minus tc but if you look at this question very well you see that a monopolist is selling uh, uh, two products it means total revenue will be coming from two angles total revenue will be coming from the uh, uh, commodity x and commodity y so this is from commodity x that is total revenue of uh, commodity x and sales for commodity uh, y is going to be total revenue for commodity y so the two together will give us the t and in that respect now we can say our profit function our total revenue function here our total revenue function is going to be t r x plus t r t r y so we can rewrite now that our profit function is a t r x plus t r y minus the combined function that is the a combined cost function that is the cost for the two this is our tc now having written this now so what are you going to do then it means we need our total revenue value then to get our total revenue we look at the question we don't have a specific a direct a, a function for our total revenue so we need to use the formula which is p times q to give us our total revenue but don't forget you are not going to use p times q here because x is used our q we are going to be using p times x now then for this, this one we are going to use p times y. So to get our total revenue, you know our total revenue normally is p, p times x. So we are going to be having now our total revenue for this one is going to be p, p, p times x, p times x plus p times y minus total cost, minus total cost. Mm, sorry, that's a mistake. Sorry, 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 sorry. So what I'm going to do here is going to be P, P times X. Yes, I'm right. Plus P times Y. Then minus total cost. Yes, I'm right. So that is our, our profit function. And now we need our P. Now if we even look at the question very well, we are not given P direct. So we are going to take P from this demand function. So let me quickly write that here. You see what I'm saying now. We are not giving P, but we must find every means to get our P. Now, since we have P here, we can write the function where we have P, which is X equals 25 minus 0.5 PX. So when you do this now, we can make P subject of the formula. When we make P subject of the formula, we'll be having X minus 25. This, I'm collecting the like term now. Then I'll be having equals minus 0.5 PX left here. So if I have this, I can divide both sides by minus 0.5 so that I can have my P standing alone. Then I can have minus 0.5, I have minus, uh, minus 0.5. Then this we cancel this one. We will be having P X only here. Then this one will be X divided X divided by minus zero point five. I'm going to have minus minus two X minus cancel minus here. I'm going to be having a uh, plus plus fifty. So I can write this function as P X P X equals uh, uh, fifty minus two X. I'm still writing the same thing. So that's my P. Now since I've gotten my P now, I can write again that my P price is 50 minus 2x minus 2x bracket bracket x this i've written this p times this bracket then x the x here then i put plus back then i need p of y again so to find p of y i write the function of uh, y given to me to get the price function now if i write this now y equals 30 minus p y so i will be having I make this subject of the formula. I want to make this subject of the formula. I'll be having y minus 30 equals minus p y minus p y. So I can write it to be minus minus p y equals uh, uh, y minus 30. So when minus starts a function, we multiply both sides by minus. So minus times minus equals p plus p y equals this will give us uh, minus y. This will give us plus 30. So I can, this is my P function now. 
This is my p function. I can write it as my p function is 30 minus y. It's still the same thing. I just you know change the position here. So I'm going to have it here 30 for the p, 30 minus y for the p. I put it in bracket times what? Times my y. This y that is here. The minus uh, the cost function. I have to put bracket here. I have to put bracket so that I won't make mistakes of sign. So I'm having x squared plus 2xy plus y squared plus 20. I close the bracket here. Now, having done this now, having done this, what am I going to do now? So I just open the brackets now. I'll be having profit equals x times 50. I'll be having 50x x times minus 2x minus 2x squared then plus y times 30 30y minus times minus minus y squared minus y squared then I use this minus to open the brackets minus x squared then minus 2xy minus y squared minus 20 then having done this now so what am I going to do let me now see if I can rearrange profits 50x is here anything with 1x here. No. Okay. What about x raised to power 2? Yes. x raised to power 2 here. x raised to power 2 here. Minus 2. x raised to power 2 minus x raised to power 2. It give you minus 3x. My, okay. Let me write this. 50. This one first. 50x. Then this will be minus 2x squared minus x squared. It give you minus 3x squared. So I can cancel this now. I can cancel this out now. Then what about 30y? I have 30y here. I have 30 y, no other single y. So I have plus 30 y. Okay. Then minus y square here, minus y square, you give me minus 2 y square. Then I can cancel out this one again. Okay. Having done that now, then minus 2 xy minus 20. Minus 20. Now, having done this, so what am I going to do? This is my profit function. And don't forget that if you are looking for profit maximizing output, when you are looking for profit maximizing output, you have to you have to find the derivative with respect to x and derivative with respect to y. Now, first order condition. Now we are now going to take first order condition with respect to uh, uh, the first the first order condition with respect to x. Now, profit with respect to change in x. Now, it means that we are only differentiating with respect to x. We are differentiating with respect to x. Now, this as x is going to be 50. This will be minus 6x. This one does not have x. We leave it. This one does not have x. We leave it. This one, does, this one has x. We are going to differentiate with respect to x only. So when you differentiate with respect to x only, that's partial derivative. It's going to give you minus 2y. This one, 20. Constant value. So it's going to be 0. So this is our... Uh, derivative with respect to x. Don't forget that our derivative with respect to x must be equal to 0. So when we equal this to 0, we are going to be having 50 minus 6x minus 6x minus 6x minus 2y equals 0. Now, if you do this very well, what are you going to have? You are going to be having a uh, you know, we want to collect the like terms. This actual value does not have letter. This zero does not have letter. Take it to the other side. We are having minus 6x minus 2y equals minus 50. So, you know, we multiply both sides by minus. We can minus start the function here. We are going to be having minus times minus 6x minus times minus here plus 2y equals minus times minus 50. This is the, uh, let's say this is equation 1. Equation one. Now, since we have the we have found the derivative with respect to s, we need to find the derivative with respect to y again from here. So it's going to be change in profit with respect to change in y. Now we differentiate with respect to only y alone. So this one has x. We, have, we don't differentiate it. This one it does not have y. This has y is going to be if you differentiate with respect to y, it's going to be 30. 30. Then if you differentiate with respect to y here, it's going to be minus 4y. Minus 4y. Then if you differentiate this with respect to y, it's going to give us minus 2x. This is constant value. We have no problem. It's going to be 0. Now, let's now make this now equal 0. If you want to say change the equal 0. So it's going to be giving us 
30 minus 4y minus 2x equals 0. So this actual value, actual value here, so we'll be having minus 4y minus 2x. So this value that's going to have better, we made this value that's going to have better. We're going to be have minus 30. You know, when minus starts equation, we multiply both sides by minus. So it's going to be minus times minus is going to be plus 4y plus 2x equals minus times minus 30. So this is going to be equation equation 2. Now, what we are going to do now is, so we'll be having equation 1, which is equation 1, which is, which is 6x plus 2y equals 50. And our equation 2, which is 4 4y, 4y plus 2x equals 30. So if you do some, if you do simultaneous equation, your x will be seven units, while your y will be four units. Now, for you to know whether this is the profit maximizing output, take the second order condition. If you take second order condition of your profit function, profit function, take the second order condition. You know this is the this is the first one we did here. If you take second order condition of this one, it's going to be giving you minus six. The second order condition here, with respect to second order condition, is going to give you minus six. And for this, for this one, if you take second order condition of this one, it's going to give you minus four. So it's negative, negative. It means that this is our correct answer. It's our correct answer. Please, this is the maximizing profit. This is the maximizing unit of output for commodity X and this is for commodity Y. Please subscribe and get more of our videos. Thank you.